Welcome to my attic. In a previous video, I built a garage door opener using an ESP8266 and a relay module. This was based on a website with a button to open or close the door. It worked great, but it was quite primitive, so today I'm taking it to the next step. Hey Siri, open the garage. Opening garage door. Now, the beauty of home automation ecosystems is that everything works together and can be controlled and monitored from one place. So what I will do in this video is to expand the capabilities of the controller and integrate it into HomeKit, which is the eco ecosystem that I've used for several years. Now to make the device smarter, in addition to the relay, I will add two sensors. They are just simple micro switches and what they will do is sense if the door is fully open or fully closed. This allows us not only to control the door but also detect if the door is open or closed. And the good part is that this will work even if I use one of the remote controls to control the door. The sensor will detect the change in state and will update in the HomeKit app accordingly. The limitation here is that with the door I have, it only accepts one control signal. And that signal toggles between opening, stopping and closing. That means that if, for example, the door has been stuck or the door is started and stopped with a remote control, then if we expect the signal to open the door, it might close it instead. Now in the end, once the operation is down, uh, it will show the correct status or it will show it stuck in opening or closing. So it's just a matter of starting it again. Now I don't expect this to happen too often, but it would be better if I had separate inputs for opening, closing and stopping. I might add another sensor later to detect if it stopped moving towards closed or moving towards open. That way, if I want to send a signal to close it, but it's instead opening, I could send two more impulses, one to stop and then one to reverse the direction to ensure that it's closing. Or if you have a better solution, please leave a comment. Now, a limitation of the ESP8266 module that I was using uh, for my previous garage door opener is that it only has two pins exposed apart from the serial read and write power and reset. And for controlling one relay and two sensors, I need three. So because of that, I'll be using this. This is a Raspberry Pi Pico W, but you can use any old ESP8266 or 32, maybe with some slight tweaks to the micro Python code. I just chose this because I had one laying around. It is possible to implement HAP, the protocol used by HomeKit directly on a microcontroller. There are libraries uh, to do that, even in Python. Uh, I, and I started out this way, but figured that since I will want to add more devices in the future, I will probably want to use HomeBridge. This allows me to make the sensors themselves as simple as possible, which means less code, less risk of bugs, and less code to maintain. It also allows me to manage all the devices from one place. There are of course different ways to approach developing for microcontrollers, but I like to start with a code. So I simply place a microcontroller on a breadboard like this and uh, set up uh, networking and the endpoints needed in order to receive commands and return statuses. I then print the commands to the console and mock sensor input. This way I can quickly get a proof of concept and build the hardware around the software. It might just be me, but I find it a lot easier to tweak the code than to rewire everything. Uh, once I have the code uh, fairly done, I replace the mock sensors with either real sensors or button uh, on the breadboard instead of uh, relays or other output. I usually use LEDs at this stage so that it's easy to follow their state. Only when I'm confident that the hardware and software works together, I take out the trusty old soldering iron. Now, I'm not very good at circuit design or soldering, so my boards are not always very efficient or pretty, but so far, they're getting the job done. 
Once I'm venturing into more advanced circuits, I might have to revise my circuit design process. If you have any tips or tricks, I would really appreciate if you can write a comment about it. Of course, the code goes through different iterations as I work. I like to start as simple as possible and then add to it as I go in order to have a, as few sources of errors as possible at any time. But here is the final code. So it starts with some basic constants and setup, network and HTTP listener, and then we move into uh, the real magic. Now the first method is start door. This is the method that gets called when a request to either open or close the door is received. It sets the target state and then sends an impulse to operate the door through the relay. Uh, this impulse is the same for opening and closing. So in case the door wasn't fully opened or closed, this could stop the door if it's moving or start moving it in the wrong direction. I might add a third sensor to de de detect if the door is moving so that this can be corrected. But that will be a future iteration. If I implement it, I'll create a separate video for it. The second method is set current state. What it does is set the current state of the door based on the sensors or the intended state if the door is in between the end states. This means that if the sensor for closed is triggered, the current state will be set to closed and the same for open. Now the cool part about this is that even if I operate the door with a remote control instead of HomeKit, once the door is open or closed, HomeKit will know the status will be updated and I will get a notification about it. When the door is neither open or closed, we try to do some guesswork about what is happening. So for instance, the target st state is set to open, well then we assume that the current state is that it's opening. Get door status returns the current and target states for the device and uh, return error is a generic method to return an error code if something goes wrong. Now this isn't really necessary as Homebridge doesn't really use these error codes, but it's good practice for debugging purposes. Handle request acts as the router. In other words, depending on the URL of the request, we send the request to the corresponding method to either set or return the current and target states. The main loop handles ensuring that the network is still connected listens for incoming connections and sends those requests to the handle request method. Of course, the source is uh, uh, freely available on GitHub, so link is in the description. Now that the sensor is set up, we can test it all out using a web browser by, for instance, going to slash question mark close, an impulse will be sent to the door and the states will be updated. Target state will be set to closed and current state to closing. By going to slash question mark get status, we can query the status. Check for instance, what happens when you trigger one of the sensors. So that's all we need to do on the PyPico W. But we're not done yet. In order to control the door from the home app or Siri, we need to reconfigure Homebridge to talk to our controller. Homebridge is a nifty app that acts, you guessed it, as a bridge between HomeKit and any devices. This means that we can use Homebridge to connect devices that are normally not HomeKit compatible into the HomeKit ecosystem. There are tons of de devices that already have ready-made plugins for HomeKit, but in this case we'll be using it for our homemade controller. I will not go into details about Homebridge here. There are tons of other YouTube videos that explain what Homebridge is and how to install and use it. And really, setup is a breeze anyway. If you, like me, use a Raspberry Pi to run it, there's even a pre-built image in the Raspberry Pi Imager tool, so installation is just a few clicks. Basically, what we need to do is connect the HomeKit functionality to send commands to and listen to, uh, to uh, the door to the simple web service that we built. Now, we could quite easily write our own plugin to do this, but there is already a plugin that does the heavy lifting for us. All we need is some configuration. The plugin we're using is called HTTP Advanced Accessory by Staromeste. Uh, once installed, you can click on settings and paste the config file that is needed from uh, the GitHub repository. Uh, link is in the description. 
just make sure you change the IP address to the IP address that your device is using. And also make sure your device is using a static IP address. So either uh, set a static IP or if you're using DHCP, make sure that you bind the IP address in your uh, uh, Wi-Fi router. Now, restart home bridge and if everything is correct, you should now see the garage accessory in the home app. Now, as you can see, I'm in a quite different place now, so let's try it out. Hey Siri, open the garage. And uh, yeah, it works. As always, if you have questions, problems, complaints, or suggestions, uh, don't hesitate to comment. And if you want, feel free to like and subscribe. See you next time.